Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about three common mistakes that beginner lure painters often make and how you can fix them. And we're starting right now. Mistake number one, using a black opaque paint to darken the back of a lure. Now this is more opinion based but I really find that it's kind of a mistake because a black opaque paint is very powerful. It covers anything it touches and it doesn't leave any detail or texture that is underneath visible anymore. So using a black paint is, it really can kill a lure. And I'm gonna show you some examples how you can fix that mistake or what alternatives you can use to darken the back of a lure. And this is a great example of using opaque black on a fishing lure. As you can see those scales are really nice on the sides but at the back they disappear and just becomes plain black. Now if you would have used a transparent black here those scales would still be visible on the back and that lure is gonna look a lot cooler. The same with the head. The head is just plain black. Well of course this is a factory lure and in factories everything has to go really fast. So that is why they choose for an opaque black because it just covers really well, shoot it on the back, shoot it on the head and the lure is done. But we're custom painters and we want to make really special stuff, stuff that we like ourselves and to create lures that stick out from those factory lures. So that is why I advise to use a transparent black on your lures instead of opaque black. Of course, you can use opaque black for certain certain things. It's, it's not a bad color. You can use it for base coats or when you want to put opaque black accents on your lure or some, some detail or it, it, it's not that. So what I'm trying to say is that don't use too much opaque black because it's gonna take away all the attention, it's gonna ruin the detail and you might have some really nice colors underlaying under that opaque black and you just totally cover them, you just hide them away, they're gone, you're never gonna see them again. So use more transparent blacks to darken the back and the head. It's gonna look more natural and you're gonna keep more of that detail, more of that pearlescent that might be underneath there or other colors you paint it, it's just gonna give it a more natural feeling instead of this really dark black. So what colors would you use then to darken the back? Now you can use wicked pearl black, you can use wicked detail black magenta, you can use wicked detail smoke gray or smoke black, you can use candy to woe black. There are a lot of black options out there which are transparent and gonna give you a really nice effect. But you don't need black to darken the back. You can also darken the back with another darker tone of that color that's already on there. For example, dark brown. We got detail moss green. We got wicked detail sepia. All these colors are darker and are darker tones. So you, even if you have a red lure, you can use a candy to o blood red to darken that red to make that back look dark. You don't need a black to make a back darker. There are a lot of options here and you have to experiment a little with what kind of color you like to use on your certain pattern to make the back darker. But opaque black is not always the best option. That's what I'm trying to say. So for example, I have two white lures here and if you would use an opaque black, you're gonna create a, a huge contrast and you're gonna lose a lot of detail because these have a pearl pigment because these are coated with a color shift pigment also on the top of the back and I want that pigment to shine through there too I want it to be glittery on the back too Mistake number two, not thinning down your paints enough. A lot of people wonder or ask or even Google what is the right consistency to thin down paint for airbrushing. And the answer is actually very simple. There is no perfect answer. 
No, the answer is actually it really depends on what you want to do. Some people say that you need the consistency of milk. Now, the consistency of milk is good when you're doing a base coat or when you're doing when you're painting large areas or when you're shooting something through a stencil and you want it to be nice and consistent, then milk is good. The thickness of milk, the consistency of milk is good. But when you want to do details or you want to paint very thin lines or you want to paint more transparent stuff or you want to make your paints more subtle, then the consistency of milk is not applicable anymore. Then it all depends on what you want to do. I'm going to show you in what occasions I'm going to use more thinner and if you would use less thinner then it's simply just for a base coat and nothing else. Because thicker paint is harder to shoot, it's going to spatter more, it's going to leave more splatters on your lure. So if you use more thinner with your paints, your paints are going to be more precise. And that's a really big difference. So for example you want to paint white fins on this lure. Now if you want to paint with white which is always an opaque paint because there is no white pigment that is fully transparent it does not exist white is always opaque you need to thin down your paints really good so I'm gonna show you how much I thin down my wicked detail white to paint kind of transparent white fins on there they're not gonna be fully transparent they're gonna be kind of transparent I always start off with my reducer first I put four drops of reducer into my chamber and now for the paint I'm gonna put only one drop in there so there's a four to one ratio four drops of reducer and only one drop of paint and that is to make my paint more transparent and this will make my paint flow way better too so I will have less speckles and splatter on there because the paint is way thinner it's almost like water now do keep in mind that paint with a lot of reducer does not have any adherence so if you're gonna cover a complete surface with a lot of reducer and only a little bit of paint that paint is not gonna stick well to your bait so it's only good for detailing and also don't forget to adjust your air pressure because this paint is like water so you don't need a lot of air pressure now how do you know these ratios? By learning. That's the only way. And try stuff. That's the only way how you're gonna find that ratio that you like and that ratio you can work with and get the results that you want. It's because it can be different for anyone. I like to use a lot of reducer for fine detailing while some people like to use a lot of flow improver or some people don't even thin down their paints and like it as it is. So try and experiment that's that's the only thing I can advise All right so I got my stencil on and another important thing is that I'm not gonna cover the entire stencil and put one full blast of white paint on there for my fin I'm only gonna do the edges and then I'm gonna put some fin beams on there and that's it and that's gonna create a little bit of a transparent feeling so I'm actually gonna start with the fin beams You see how I'm layering that white on there and you get that subtle transparent white feeling. Now when I put a clear coat on this that fin is gonna become way more transparent and it's gonna be more subtle on there. It's gonna be it's gonna connect all that paint together. It's gonna look way better then. And the same thing applies also if you're gonna use a darker transparent color to create a darker fin on a lighter background such as this white belly I'm gonna create a dark brown fin using wicked detail sepia which is a really nice dark brown so I grab my 4011 again take four drops of reducer and two drops of paint I'm gonna use a little bit of 4050 for this one so it's gonna be even more transparent but it's not gonna be as runny 
it's gonna be it's still gonna be a little thicker so if you like to use thicker paints and you don't like to use too much reducer you can also put a, a little bit of extra 40 50 in there And mistake number three, there are no mistakes in lure painting, only happy little accidents. And what I mean by that is that any mistake can be fixed somehow. It doesn't really matter what kind of art you're doing, if you're painting lures or you're just airbrushing or you're maybe painting on canvas or, or you renovate cars, things are not always going to go as planned. But how you solve those problems is way more important than focusing on the problem itself. The only way we learn things is by making mistakes. That's the only way. So it's really good to make mistakes because that's the only way you can solve the problem and get better as a lure painter. A great airbrush artist once said to me that the only difference between a professional and an amateur is how they cover up their mistakes. Because if you look at a professional's artwork, you don't see any mistakes. You think. It was meant to be that way, but trust me, even for them, things do not go as planned. And it's the same for us amateurs. How you handle these happy accidents and see them as an opportunity to do something else with it. Be creative and just change course a little in your idea, because most things can be fixed. And I'm going to show you how I fix a few things. Let's say I painted one of these fins and I didn't like it, then I can always wipe it off because I'm painting on a clear coat. So it can always go back to the base. And that's why it sometimes is interesting if you're not sure about the next step, put a clear coat on your lure. It can be a very thin clear coat as long as it's strong enough that you can wipe on it. And if it goes wrong, you can just wipe it off. Or let's say that you painted a fin on the body, straight on the paint, and it doesn't look good. You can always cover that fin again and just put an opaque white base over it and then try again. That fin is not going to be transparent anymore, but at least you got a second chance. But that's just about the fins. There are also other problems that can go. You might drop your lure, you might scratch off some paint, um, or in this case, the gray coat doesn't go well. For all three problems, I use the same solution. I make a wound out of it. So how do I make wounds out of these? I grab my mixing cup. The mixing ratio is not that important. I think I use about 4 drops of 40-50 and 2 drops of Candy 2O. It might be 3 sometimes, it gets a little darker then. It doesn't really matter that much as long as it looks like blood. And then I grab my paintbrush. This is a nice fine liner paintbrush from Lure Blanks, which has really long hairs so it can hold a lot of paint and you can draw really long nice lines with these. And then as you can see here in the light, there is this uneven crack in my clear coat. and I just make a wound out of it. And that is how I save my mistakes. All the products that I use in my videos are available in my webshop called lureblanks.eu which is a European based webshop based in Sweden and if you would buy anything there you will be supporting me and the channel. As always guys if you have any questions, ideas or you want to share something with the lure painting community leave them in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, have a nice day and see you next time. Bye bye! There is no perfect answer. I need to warm up my tongue. All. Only happy little accidents.